That's all I got. Lemonade is a dollar. That's all I got. Make it work, I'm thirsty. Lemonade is a dollar. I ain't got no dollar. It's hot as hell out here, man. Just hook me up. All the money I spent up in this place, there's some more bullshit. Lemonade is a dollar. Mm. Do you guys have anything other than lemonade? Hello everyone, this is the Afro Avenger back with yet another album review, and today's album is Lemonade uh, by Beyonce. It was released April 23rd of this year, 2016. Uh, some chart information, it peaked at number one on the US Billboard 200. Uh, it was released under the labels Parkwood and Columbia, and its singles are Formation and Sorry. So without further ado, let's get this started. This album was yet another surprise album of sorts from Beyonce, as well as Beyonce's second visual album after her previous self-titled LP. However, as opposed to each track having its very own music video, this particular album was made into somewhat of a movie featured on HBO. Uh, each track had its own music video, but it flowed as one hour-long film. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I recommend checking it out. Uh, it's pretty deep and very visually impressive. Uh, as for the album, now, this might be Beyonce's greatest record to date. Uh, we'll get more into it soon, but this album, upon first listen, absolutely blew me away. Lemonade draws from a lot of different places within the music realm. Uh, Beyonce has been known to combine genres in the past, but this is definitely her most diverse album out of her current discography. On this record, Beyonce utilizes her tools like R&B, pop, soul, and influences of hip-hop and gospel, but adds even more flavor to the mix with country, blues, psychedelia, funk, and rock. It's just a really great combination of styles and genres that make for a deeply unique and diversified LP. Let's look at the very first track, Pray You Catch Me. Now, just from the first track, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that this album is very much different from her last project. However, there are very subtle nuances that give this track a sense of purpose on this album. Perhaps the progressive chord progressions, the gospel influence melody, either one of those. However, from the second track and forward, it's a whole different ballgame. The sampling on this album is phenomenal, and on Hold Up, it's just a major shift, and that's how it feels throughout this entire project. Just constant shifts, but never feeling like a, whoa, this, that just doesn't fit kind of shift. The sample of Can't Get Used to Losing You by Andy Williams just gives this track a very innocent tone, despite it obviously being incredibly anger-filled. We'll get to that. And even Don't Hurt Yourself borrowing the drums from Led Zeppelin's When the Levee Breaks and just having a slightly mid-70s hard rock vibe all together really shows what kind of album we're working with here. You would never have expected an artist like Beyonce to create such a complex, detailed musical work such as this, but she is truly an ever-growing artist, no longer making typical pop records as she was. Keeping on the subject of music though, on the later track, Daddy Lessons, Beyonce uses a style that she's never really worked with in the past, and that's country, fusing it with some New Orleans-styled stomping jazz and blues, all meant to show off her country roots, and despite it having a New Orleans style, she is, in fact, from Texas. Even so, this country pop tune was actually pretty alright. Uh, perhaps not the strongest on this record, but there's no shame in trying something a little different. I highly doubt Beyonce will be putting out very many country records, but showing her roots on an album that talks about what it's talking about, we'll get to that, was probably a good, fitting move. The only tracks that really felt like stuff she's done previously were the opening track, Pray You Catch Me, even though it was somewhat trippy at the beginning, the soulful, emotional piano ballad, Sandcastles, a little bit of Sorry, maybe a little bit of Six Inch, and definitely Love Drought. Everything else had a sense of newness and freshness. In actuality, though, nearly every track had elements of Beyonce's previous self-titled album, but some tracks felt like they could have actually been on that album. I totally enjoyed the music on this album. The instrumentation was fantastic, diverse, and just really fun at points. Uh, really dark at others, but all just being really enjoyable to listen to. Beyonce's vocals were soulful as always, but I wasn't a huge fan of some of the growls that she did, uh, like on the track Sandcastles. I know it was there for emotional effect, but for my taste, I could have done without. On the subject of this LP's lyricism, it deals with several different ideas, but the overall prevailing theme 
which has been the subject of much talk, scandal, and controversy, is the idea that Jay-Z, Beyonce's husband, cheated on her with another woman. Um, it's made painfully clear right from the very first verse of this album when she says, you can taste the dishonesty, it's all over your breath, as you pass it off so cavalier. Really, the majority of this album is going through the process of suspicion, anger, and healing after an infidelity incident. Uh, to be honest, and I know I'm kind of getting off track here, but that seems to be uh, something that a lot of people are missing with this album. Uh, maybe they haven't heard it all the way through, or maybe they were only pa paying attention to the Beyoncé being mad parts like on Hold Up and Don't Hurt Yourself. Uh, but this album is not just about Beyoncé being mad at Jay-Z, and it's not even an entire album of Beyoncé trying to get back at Jay-Z. Um, it's an album telling a story about a rough period in their marriage and how she personally got through it, um, all the way up to the point where she and Jay-Z are trying to heal this wound in their relationship. Uh, there have been countless memes and Twitter posts on the subject, many of them labeling Jay-Z as a bad person for what he did. And I'm not defending him, I love Jay-Z, but him cheating wasn't right. However, this album is not all about Jay-Z, uh, about how Jay-Z is a terrible person. Um, there are other things we need to look at. I know I rambled for a bit there, but that really needed to be said. Like I said uh, in the beginning, watch the movie and you'll think twice and understand the album like I did. Anyways, other lyrical themes on this album involve racial pride. You'll, you all probably know that she stirred up masses after showing off her song Formation, uh, which is about how she's not ashamed of her culture or her heritage, which she also expresses on Freedom, which features Kendrick Lamar, of all people. A theme that draws from that is her upbringing. On Daddy Lessons, she's talking about how her father taught her to be tough, and she draws a lot of comparisons between her father, who cheated on her mother, and Jay-Z cheating on her. She's questioning herself on whether or not she can forgive Jay-Z if she was able to forgive her father for his unfaithfulness to her mother, both of which were major driving forces in her life even up to her solo career. Now, in case you're wondering why this album is even called Lemonade, it's really just a metaphor and is even based on a metaphor. Beyonce's grandmother and Jay-Z's own grandmother were huge influences on this album. The reason it's even called Lemonade is because when Jay-Z's grandmother, Hattie White, gave a speech at her 90th birthday party, she uttered the time-tested saying, I was given lemons, so I made lemonade. That rings true for this album, making the best out of a difficult situation. Part of that is simply growing up, both in life and in the relationship. Another is possibly having material for a new, compelling album, just as this one is. There's a lot of conviction and obvious anger in Beyoncé's voice on many of these tracks. On the slower, more somber tracks, there's an equal amount of poignancy in her voice. Uh, it's one constant string of flowing emotions, be it malice, envy, pride, or even happiness, which there is very little of on this album. For about three quarters of this album, it's mostly the aforementioned process of, of suspicion, anger, and your building, uh, while the other quarter is about pride in her culture and background. It mixes the two and ever so often sprinkles one onto the other, so they all fit together perfectly. Overall, I don't think I need to say it, but I loved this album. I loved every bit of it. Uh, every track on here I thought was fantastic. Nothing feels lazy or sloppy or rushed or out of place. Not, none of it feels like fluff. Um, it all feels like it fits and it does fit. Each track is a piece of a puzzle in this concept album. Uh, the music was amazing. The features such as Kendrick Lamar on Freedom, The Weeknd on Six Inch, or James Blake on Forward, and even helping with production made this album so much better. Uh, even though there were producers up the wazoo on here, this was Beyonce's album. And I usually don't say that ab uh, about modern records, but this was all Beyonce on here. Um, she was seriously pouring out her feelings for the world to see and being very sp uh, specific about it, something a lot of artists don't really do um, these days. Most artists are rather ambiguous when it comes to songs talking about someone. I'm not going to lie to you, I would be absolutely shocked if this album didn't doesn't get nominated for Album of the Year at next year's Grammy Awards. Um, it really deserves it, as this was easily one of the best albums to emerge from this year, and there have already been many amazing albums released in 2016, but this one, uh, this one not making it would be ludicrous. Anyways, that does for this another album review. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did enjoy, please hit that like button, also subscribe if you want to see more, and if there's a song or an album that you want to see reviewed on this, ch uh, this show, uh, please leave a comment down below, or check out my Facebook or my Twitter. The links are in the description. Uh, anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. So long. How is anyone supposed to believe you can make lemonade when you can't even spell it? How old are you? <laughs> Too damn old to be riding your ease backwards, damn it.